So what are we doing here? We're doing the best duos in Rocket League history. Um, that's the that's the topic. Top ten duos in Rocket League history, and this is you know my way that I've come up with my top ten. Is uh, you know not a conclusive top ten. It's just my opinion. Um, but to start off, I I tier listed Rocket League events. So at, at S plus tier, I know S plus. Some people don't like S plus. They're like just use S. Just down rank everything. Use S. I'm using S plus because this is the only event of its caliber, and it's last year's World Championship, RLCS Worlds 2022-23. I think, uh, actually, did I get that year wrong? Yeah, I did. It's 21-22. It's supposed to say. I'll edit that right now. Last year's World Championship, not this year's World Championship. Um, that is the only event of its caliber that's ever happened. The biggest prize pool ever, apart from Gamers 8, which is a crew battle, so I pushed it down. Um, and it's not RLCS, so I pushed it a bit further down. But yeah, RLCS Worlds last year, no other event holds as much importance and weight as that does. That is why it's in a tier of its own. And then below that, we've got every other RLCS Worlds plus E-Leagues. And then I should also add in there um, Majors. I don't know if that'll even fit. But yeah, it's plus plus Majors plus E-Leagues. I'll, I'll do this instead. I think it'll fit if I use a forward slash. Yeah, there we go. So at S tier... Every Worlds before last year, and the majors, and the e, the two E-Leagues that happened, that's like the next level of RL event that ever happened. Last year's Worlds at the top, every other Worlds, plus major RLCS majors, plus E-Leagues. Then below that, we've got every 3v3 LAN that was a 50k prize pool or more, and I've thrown G8, Gamers8, into this tier as well. Obviously a much bigger prize pool, but not 3v3 purely, so it's a bit uh, lower in terms of ranking players, because nobody really practices crew battles. Um, and then I've also put RLCS Season 9 and RLCS Season X Championships in this uh, tier because at that time there were no lands due to the pandemic and these prize pools were inflated as such, so they're obviously worth more. If you don't believe me that they're worth more, listen to how many times Rizzo brings up who would have won RLCS Season 9 if there was a LAN. I think it's worth more. I'm not making fun of Rizzo. I think, I think it's a good discussion. Um, and then at, at the B tier, the very bottom, the least important events that I'm considering, but still important enough to be considered, are RLCS online playoffs slash splits. So it used to be playoffs. Now it splits in the current open format. Um, I'm also putting the gnarly events in here and the universal open events in here because uh, gnarly events, the prize pools were not uh, comparable to other 3v3 international events at the time. Um, and the universal opens were 2v2. So... Uh, although having a bit more comparable to that 50k plus threes prize pool, they are twos, so I put them down just like I took G2 down, uh, G2, G8 down, I should say. So that's my that's my tier list of events. Do you guys understand? Type one in chat if you understand. That is how I how I the, uh, consider events in terms of importance in ranking players in anything. So when we're ranking the best duos in Rocket League history, this is really what I'm looking at. How well did players? How well did duos do in this event? Um, with that in mind. Let's get to my honorable mentions, the duos that didn't quite make the top 10. And I've, I've picked out five uh, duos here. So let's let's get into that. Uh, they are Rizzo and Kronovi. I'm putting Rizzo and Kronovi in here as a honorable mention for a top 10 duo of all time. Um, I'm putting Vatira Exotic in there. Um, the reason I'm picking Vatira Exotic instead of Vatira Itachi um, is because Vatira and Exotic have won a $1,000 tournament last weekend that Itachi didn't play in. So that's the only thing, as far as I can find, that they did together. That's very, very random. But I, I'm, I'm saying that's like that's the marginal difference between saying Vatira and the Itachi. Uh, Metza Remco, they won an E-League together. They came third at Worlds together. They also came second at DreamHack Dallas uh, together. Uh, then you got Ferra Chassette. They won two DreamHacks together. They also came second at Beyond the Summit together. And they won EU Online in Season 8 together. And then Jacob and Fireburner. I believe that they won RLCS Online season one, two, seasons 1, 2, and 3 for NA together. Um, and then they also won X Games, which is a, a, a cool LAN. And, uh, oh, they did something else. I'm going to pull up my notes because I've forgotten. What else did they do? They did one other thing together. They won something else. They came second. Oh, no, they came third at RLCS Season 3. That's what they did. So that's the, these are the, the honorable mentions. Now... Before I get into my top 10, I'm going to let you know one other thing that I did uh, when I was making this top 10 to make it a bit more interesting, a bit more challenging. And that was, I'm not putting multiple, I'm not putting the same name twice. For example, if we're talking about the best duos of all time, 
you'd probably just take every duo that made up the Gale Force Esports and Dignitas and put them in there because they achieved so much together as a trio that you know you'd have to put Turbo Panda, Turbo K Dot, K Dot Panda in your top ten. That's already three out of ten used. So what I've done is I've picked my favorite duo out of any of these rosters and I'm putting that one in there and I'm not putting in the third. Maybe the third will appear with another duo, but they won't appear with either of the players already used. We're not going to see any repeat names in my top ten. And that also means we're not going to see any of my honorable mentions names in the top 10 either. Somebody's saying Magnus robbed. Well, actually, Metsa Magnus was kind of a duel that could have been. Uh, they, they, they should have stuck together. One of the most famous benchings of all time, one of the worst roster moves of all time was uh, Magnus and uh, a lot benching Metsa um, and then completely falling apart with their new third. I think it was Greasy. Um, whereas Metsa went on to join Remco and they started winning. So, yeah, really, it, it was a duo that could have been, but did they achieve enough together to make an honorable mention? No, they didn't, because although they are a legendary duo, these guys achieved more together. Um, okay, do you guys want to see my number 10 duo of all time and a little trophy cabinet that I made for them to illustrate what they've won together? Let's get into it. Number 10, I've got Ahmad and Khaled. And at the bottom there, you can see 475 days. That is the time between their first and last trophy that I'm awarding them. Now, the five trophies at the bottom are all MENA regionals. And not, not regionals. They've actually won how many regionals now? Like, 13. So instead of putting 13 golds, I'm combining splits together. So one of those gold uh, trophies is winning a split. The second one is winning another split. The third one's winning another split. The fourth one's winning another split. Like, they've won five splits in MENA, so I've given them five B-tier gold trophies. They've also got an S uh, for coming second at the or they've got a silver in the S tier for coming second at the uh at the spring major last season and the time between their first and last trophies out of these six was 475 days if these guys were able to compete in RLCS before that we'd be looking at something plus like 1500 1600 days ish um because these guys are have been teammates for the I think longest time technically and they've been teammates under an org for the second longest after Garrett and Justin but if you're talking how long have these guys actually been teaming together casually or under an org no one has teamed together longer th th than Ahmed and Khaled I didn't consider that for my ranking but it is interesting to note um, yeah crazy to w think about what they could have achieved if they were allowed to play uh, RLCS earlier now nine number nine ninth for me best duo of all time Cuxer and Marky Cuxer 97 and Marky Duda um, they won RLCS EU Season 2 Online. That's their B-tier trophy. They won DreamHack Summer 2017. That's their A-tier trophy in gold as well. And then, of course, they had two uh, RLCS Grand Finals, first and second. That's their gold-silver um, in S-tier. So they don't have as many trophies from me as uh, the Falcons duo, Sandrock duo of uh, Ahmad and Khaled do. Um, with four compared to six, but they do have some higher up the tier list. So I think that puts them higher in the ranking. Another look at Ahmad and Khaled, who of course got all of these trophies uh, playing with TRK. Uh, honorable mention Senzo as well for uh, for his contribution. Um, but yeah, Cuxer and Marky, their first one was with Mike Rules, that little silver, second place. Um, and then all the other three, actually not all the other three, Two of the others were, were with Greasy, and then that A tier in the middle was with Mystic, Cuxer, Marky, Mystic. So they had they had three different thirds that they won events with or had no, noteworthy results with. Um, but only in less than a one-year period, 315 days, the time between their two notable uh, wins, which were the online portion of EU... Actually, no, it would have been their second place season one, RLCS and DreamHack Summer, less than a year. So actually, they didn't win RLCS level, RLCS era events uh, for that long together. Before RLCS, of course, they did dominate. Um, but that's, uh, that's a different, kind of a different category, different story. Um, Khaled and Ahmad never won an S-tier trophy. Yeah, you're right. But I, that's a silver. That's a second place. Uh, the gold is first. Silver is second. Um, so that, yeah, they got a second place at S tier. They got a second place. Um, for, for, by the way, another thing I'm going to mention, I'm only like noting firsts in the B tier. I'm only noting firsts and seconds in the A tier, but I am going to note first, seconds and thirds in S and S plus. Cause I think third place is also noteworthy when it's a world championship. 
Um, but yeah, these guys only made firsts and, uh, and, and a second. These guys only made firsts and a second as well. Okay, that's that's the baseline. You guys are probably understanding where I'm going with this now. Let's let's see where you guys think we're going next. If anyone has any guesses who the next duo is going to be, um, you know, based on my criteria and what we've done so far, now's your chance to get it in the chat. Rai says it's him. Mogsa, Mogsa, Metsa Mognus. No, I'm not going to have Metsa Mognus. I explained that in the honorable mentions. Uh, not quite. A lot of very interesting guesses here. Someone, at least someone is right. Nate DeGreat, thanks for the seven month tier one, by the way. Welcome back to the channel. Okay, my number eight is another non North American European duo. It's Card and Kayo, recently separated duo from Furia. They have, of course, a top, well, it's, it's third equal. They have a third equal at the most important event of all time. The World Championship last year. That's where their S tier bronze trophy is up there. They've got two B tier golds. Those are both from RLCS uh, season 2021-22. Uh, um, where they actually won two of the splits. Not th They didn't win all three splits actually in South America. They were a second seed coming into one of the lands. But they got two golds. They won two of the splits in RLCS last season. That's what the, go the golds are for. Uh, and then their A-tier golds. One of them is for being the top seed in RLCS Season 9. The winner of RLCS Season 9 for South America Online. There were no lands back then, so I've put that season up because the prize money was significantly higher. Um, and then they also have an A-tier uh, gold. Wait, I've forgotten what their other A-tier gold is. But their A-tier their silver is for coming second place in RLCS Season X. Uh, which is also online. Let me just check what their other A tier gold was. I've totally blanked on it. Um, oh, it was Gamers 8, of course. I put Gamers 8 in that one as well. So yeah, they got Gamers 8. They won that. They won RLCS Season 9 for South America when there were no lands. They got second in RLCS Season X when there were no lands. Uh, again, online. Two other online wins in the B tier in last season. And then the big one, S plus uh, third equal, which is phenomenal. What's Rise said? What's Rise said that's toxic? I didn't read what Rise said that was toxic. Uh, he's been called toxic by a lot of people. I don't read anything that he said that was toxic. I don't get it. But I, I, yeah, I, I, I've, I've scrolled for a bit. I read his last few comments. He's not even been toxic. Why, why are people calling him toxic? Leave him alone. Um, okay. Who do you think I've got next? You guys can guess. This That's my 10th. Ninth and eighth, and uh, five others honorable mentions. I guess I'm technically doing top 15 here, but I've not ordered the honorable mentions because they're kind of equal. Yeah, they do say you're toxic for the sake of it. They like to call you toxic. I'll, I'll see. Can anyone guess who I've got at number seven? Actually, a few of you have got it right. Yeah, I've got Rise and Joyo, and not just because he's in chat, and you know that, because there's no way I could have put this graphic together in that time. That's way too much production value for me. Not that it's an impressive graphic, but you know my stream's production value is low. So only four trophies, only four wins, but 287 days. Very short window between their first win and their most recent win. Uh, their first win, obviously, was the uh, winter split last season when they won EU Online. Uh, and then, of course, they won the, uh, the spring split major. Um, where they weren't actually a top seed, but that's their S tier win. And then they've got silvers for the winter major and another silver for this season's fall major. Uh, Joy and Rise were teammates for that whole time. Vatira was their third for three of those. And then they had Azrael as their third uh, for the other one. Worth mentioning in passing, by the way, that for Furia, Card and Kayo, it wasn't just with Yan that they did this. They got the, uh, the World Championship top three um, as well as the um, RLCS Season X second place uh, with Yan. But before that, they were playing with Tander uh, for their two RLCS Season 9, uh, or, or rather for their one RLCS Season 9 win. That was with Tander. Uh, but yeah, their two B tiers there, the S Plus and the A Silver, were all yeah, uh, with uh, with Yan. So is and one of the A golds, the Great Gamers 8. But one of the RLCS Season 9, one of those golds was with Tander. Didn't want to leave him unmentioned. Uh, but yeah, Joy Arise, shorter time frame. Prestige, look at the, it's kind of crazy what they did. They just came in, got like three RLCS LAN grand finals, and then they broke up. Like, I'd love to see this duo team up again in the future. Uh, you know, 
looking at how many rosters rise is changing in the past few splits it might be you know the first split in next season the way things we could see him coming back thinking you know what oxygen are rubbish bds are rubbish i'm going back to joyo that's where i got all my trophies uh we can only we can dream we can hope nate to great thanks for seven months year one by the way all right who do you guys think i've got at number six this might be the first controversial one just as a little clue who do you guys think I've got at number six for most um, successful duos in Rocket League history? <laughs> Toxic traitor. <laughs> Some good guesses. I'm actually pretty surprised by some of these guesses. Um... Yeah, a couple people got this one. I've got Chicago and JNAPS. We've been duo for a long time. If you remember my honorable mentions, I had two of these guys' uh, teammates. Well, actually, never Chicago's teammate, Kronovi, but JNAP's teammate, Kronovi, and uh, both of these guys' teammate, Rizzo, were, they were the original G2 who did well uh, together. Like, the, the, the original G2 who really had success with Kronovi, JNAP's, Rizzo. Then they got rid of Kronovi for Chicago. Then they got rid of uh, Rizzo for Atomic. But out of all of the duos I've ever played for G2, these guys are the most successful pairing. Uh, way too low. Just wait. Just wait till you see the trophy cabinets of the guys who are coming next. Just wait. Don't worry, guys. There's some incredible duos that I think you're forgetting. But yeah, I've got uh, Chicago JNAPs at number six. Uh, they've got, of course, the S plus second place World Championship last year. Also, that S tier second place, that silver in the S tier, was Rizzo Chicago JNAP Season 7 World second place. And then, of course, they won the Winter Major with Atomic. So most of this is with Atomic, um, but also quite a lot of it is with Rizzo as well. Um, they did the uh, second place at Season 7 with Rizzo. They won RLCS Season 9 online with Rizzo as well. And I think they were first seed going into Worlds in Season 5. Um, no, that wasn't with Rizzo. When... No, that wasn't with uh, with Rizzo. That would have been with uh, every time they were, they were first seed. They they would have it would have been with um, Atomic. Yeah, they they did get the North American Spring Series. I decided to give them a gold medal for the Spring Series or the gold trophy in the B tier for the Spring Series. That was online, and then they were the first seed in the twenty twenty two Spring Split as well uh, with Atomic. So very impressive. Like, I mean, total up their achievements. The most impressive trophy cabinet by far that we've seen so far. They've got the Spring Series playing with Rizzo in the B tier. They've got the uh, 2022 fall uh, Spring Split playing with Atomic in the B tier. They've got the uh, Season 9 Online Championship with Rizzo. They got second place at DreamHack Montreal in the B tier. And in, in the A tier, sorry, there. Also with Rizzo. A lot of this is with Rizzo, actually. Um, but these two did have the Rizzo and the Atomic synergy. So that's why they are the pick for me for for g2 um but yeah you guys want to see more i guess because you think this is too low so i guess let's compare it to my number five and you guys can tell me if you think i've messed this up or if i haven't uh before i reveal it go ahead and guess if you want to um who do you think who do you think is next chat who do you think is next Everybody's actually agreeing. Wow. Well, it's not who you guys think. Next, I've got a number five. Fairy Peak and K-Dot. Fairy Peak and K-Dot, number five, all-time duo. And look at the days between their first and last trophy. 1,505 days between their first and last trophy. That's because they achieved some wins together. Then they broke up. Then they got back together and got some more. So their first win was RLCS Season 3 EU Online. That's in the B tier, gold. Their last thing that they, that they won together was RLCS Season X Championships. That's the A tier gold that they've got there. Um, apart from that, they've also got EU Season 7. They won online. They won the Spring Series online in the B tier there. They got second place at the DreamHack Leipzig 2. They got second place in or EU Season 9 online. They got first place at uh, the World... Uh, at the um, Season 7 World Championship. Second place... Uh, two world championships there in the S tier, uh, season three and season eight. So what do you guys think? Do you guys think that this is a duo that should be above or below Chicago and JNAPS? Because I think I've got them just barely above Chicago and JNAPS for me personally. Um, they got nine trophies versus seven. 
Um, you know, D2 do have the second place at the World Championship last year, the biggest trophy of all time. But compared to that uh, silver in the S plus tier, the Fairy Peak k Dup duo have got an extra silver in the S, an extra silver in A, and a gold in B. So I have to put them above. Uh, that's that's why I've got Fairy and k Dup just slightly above. But I do think G2 are close. Very, very G2 duo that is of uh, Chicago and JNAPs are very close. These two are hard to separate and if you want to switch them i i can you know i could see i could see that i think this is very very close um yeah these guys of course they've won uh events they've got trophies i'm going to call them with uh mystic in season three scrub killer in season seven and eight and then alpha 54 after that season nine and season x that was their three players that they got trophies with um, so quite interesting that they've got two different, two completely different era, eras that they played in. Um, season season three and uh, season X, like that's a massive window to be at the top of the game, winning. Um, so really, really impressive to to those guys uh, to those guys for doing it. If they stayed together the whole time, they would have been higher because they would have kept. I think they would have won other other things if they'd stayed together in seasons four through six where they were not playing together. Um, okay, yeah, it's possible for G two. Uh, duo of JNAPS and um, Chicago to pass the uh, duo of Ferry and KDOP. I think if Chicago and JNAPS can get any other trophy at all, I would put them above Ferry and KDOP immediately. If they if they won any, if they came in as a first seed from this split to the major before even doing anything at the major, I would immediately put them above. Uh, fairy Peak and Kid Up, for me personally. That's how close it is. If they do anything else at all, I'll put them ahead. Anything else. Yeah, like I said, right now the only B-tier uh, events that are happening are online splits. So if they can, if they, if G2, just my promise to you, if G2 win, if they're the first seed from NA going into this major, I'll, I'll put them up to number five ahead of Fairy and Kid Up. Just like that. Uh, if they, you know, finish top three, well, yeah, it would be top three in this format. If they finish top three at this major, even if they don't go in as first seed, if they can finish top three at the major, I'll put them uh, ahead of Fair and K-Dup as well. Just like that. It's, it's so close. For me, it's really, really close. But right now, Vitality have the edge. Uh, okay. Number four. We're getting serious. Who do you guys think is the fourth best 2v2 duo of all time? For those of you just tuning in, by the way, that little number at the bottom of days is the time between the first and the last trophy that they won together. It's not really something I use to rank the, the players. Um, I just thought it was interesting to throw in there to show you guys the time frames that these players played together. Jesse, like just 70 month year one, man. I'm so glad to see you back streaming. I hope you keep going. Uh, I've been loving the streams. I've been tuning in and uh, enjoying the content. Can't wait to see the e EU quals. When do you guys try? Do you qualify tomorrow? Well, I was about to say try and qualify, but then I immediately corrected myself to qualify because we don't need to talk about trying. Um, that's tomorrow, right? Yeah, Jesse is back streaming for anyone who's wondering. You play SK? Yeah, easy. Easy wins. Free wins. Okay, some of you guys guessed this correctly. Round two. That's tomorrow. My goodness. I'm excited. Is it tomorrow or is it after? I can't remember. I'll, I'll show you guys my number four. It is tomorrow. Cool. Your number four duo of all time. Quite a lot of you guessed it. I've got Gimmick and Squishy. As the number four all time, uh, they've got actually got ten trophies compared to Vitality's nine, and uh, a lot in the S tier. They've got first place RLCS season six. They've got second place at E League two. Um, they've also got top. Well, it's third equal actually at RLCS season seven. They've got uh, third at. Um, what was their other S tier? I'm, I'm trying to do it off the top of my head, but I can't remember. Yeah, R RLCS Season 4, they got third place. Um, and then RLCS Season 7, they got third equal. E-League 1, they got third equal. So that's all the bronzes in the S tier. Their silver is E-League 2, and their gold, of course, the big one, RLCS Season 6 uh, win. Their two golds, two DreamHacks. They won uh, DreamHack Atlanta and DreamHack Dallas together in the A tier. And then they were able to win Universal Open 2, Gnarly 1 and North America Online Season 4. That's their three golds in the B tier for me. If you want to know why I ranked all these events in these in these different tiers, go back to the start of the VOD. I explained it there. Um, but yeah, I did have a, a, a clear like tier list of w how important I think events are when you're talking about 
uh, success and uh, ranking players. Yeah, that that's where I put gimmick and squishy. I do think that they're you know just a a, a little bit ahead of um, of Fairy K Dot Chicago J Naps. I don't think it's as close. Uh, like Chicago J Naps, Fairy K Dot for me almost interchangeable. I just gave Fairy K Dot the edge um, because they had the 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 higher amount of uh, of trophies there. They had nine versus uh, just you know the one at the top there from uh, G2. Yeah, Cloud9 have got even more. They've got um, they've got 10. So that's why I've got the, them a little bit higher. Um, yeah, Vitality would have to win something. They'd have to they'd have to do more than win it. Like even if Vitality were first seed going into the next major, which is uh, not Vitality because it's not Vitality anymore. But even if Ferry and Kidop were, were seed one going into the next major for EU, I wouldn't put them ahead of Gimmick and Squishy. I said I would do that. I would I would put Chicago J Naps ahead of K Dot Ferry if they go into the major as first seed from NA. I wouldn't move K Dot Ferry ahead of Gimmick Squishy if they did that. I think it's a slightly bigger gap for me. Um yeah, that's just that's just my opinion. But yeah, seven hundred days. I think a lot of people uh remember the old days as taking longer. But actually these guys, seven hundred days just under two years is how long it was between their first win with... Uh, everything they won together was, was Torment. Uh, their first win was DreamHack Atlanta. And their last win together, uh, I think it would have been RLCS Season 7. Or was it E-League 2? Was E-League 2 after... No, E-League 2 was after Season 6. Yeah, it would have been RLCS Season 7. The, the time that these guys were winning together, they stayed together a, a bit longer. But yeah, DreamHack Atlanta to RLCS Season 7 Top 4. That was their window where they won all this, which is very impressive. But yeah, who do you guys think... Um, I've got number three. I'll let you guys guess as I uh, say thank you to Trider78 for the 100 bits. Uh, he says, I think a format throws people off a bit in terms of majors. You obviously have gimmick squishy, but if you were taking Jules as 2v2 partners, you could already kid up Fairy Peaks number one all time. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about Jules in 3v3, not uh, in 2v2. Otherwise, this would be very different. I'm just talking about Jules that have been 3v3 teammates. Um, hopefully, that was, uh, hopefully that was explained well. Okay. Number three, um, going for a team that have less trophies, actually. But they got the big one. I'm putting an extra monkey moon number three. And uh, I thought this would be controversial, but actually people don't seem to be too mad about it, which I, I, is surprising. Usually when I put Squishy outside number one in anything, people are like, this is outrageous. This is hate speech. But actually, I think extra monkey moon have just achieved more um, they've got the the they they won the biggest event of all time. They they won the most important event of all time. It's the only event that I've got in the S plus tier last year's World Championship. They won it, um, and on top of that, they won four different online splits in EU, uh, three during RLCS Season X, and they also took the uh, last season Spring Split together online. They were second place in RLCS Season X World, uh, Championships in EU. That's their one silver. Their one blemish on these guys' record that isn't gold is that one silver. They lost to Vitality in uh, RLCS Season X Championships. Massive upset. And of course, they were able to win the 2021-22 uh, win, win uh, fall split together. Yeah, my only S, S plus event is the 2021-22 World Championship. At the end of this season... This year's World Championship will be S plus as well. I just hold the, the new annual format biggest prize pool ever world championship at a higher caliber than half year world championships that we previously had and uh you know third of a year majors that's just where i put them um so yeah that's why i've got extra monkey moon up there the the big win for me like that that win in the world championship last year is just worth so much um like i would say and this this is just you know what i'm thinking I think that that one win, the one world championship win that uh, Extra Monkey Moon got together last year is worth about as much as Cloud9's Gimmick and Squishy uh, Season 6 win um, and their E-League 2 second place and their E-League 1 third place and their world championship Season 4 third place. Like it's, it's, it's worth so much. Um, that's just w the way I rank things. Um, but yeah, as we have more annual world championships, I think the, the top, the most legendary players and duels and teams of all time will be teams that have won the annual worlds. It's just the way things are going to go. There's very few teams and duels and uh, players 
who have done enough in the older format to compete with uh, players who are going to have any kind of longevity in the new format. But okay, who do you guys think I've got at number two? We're getting to the the very top. That's my number four on screen. I've already I've already revealed number three. Number two. Yeah, you're all right. It's Garrett and Justin. Are you guys ready to see the fattest trophy cabinet you've ever seen in your lives, by the way? Look at this thing. We had to get an extra wide for it. It's, that's why there's been so much empty space to the right of the screen this whole stream. Because these guys won so many trophies. We had to make extra space for when we eventually get to revealing their one. Uh, let me just read out to you what these guys have won together. Uh, they've, they've been first seed in NA Online Season 6, 7... 8, Season X Winter, Season X Spring, 2022 Fall, 2022 Winter. They've won all of that in North America. It's insane. They've also come second place in the A tier at DreamHack Valencia and WSOE together, as well as winning Beyond the Summit and the North American uh, RLCSX World Champion, uh, NA Championships, I should say. They've also come uh, third equal at E League 2, uh, second place at the, 2020, at the 21 uh, Fall Major to BDS, second place at the famous World Championship in Season 5, and first place in the Season 8 World Championship. This is a big jump. You know, I talked earlier on about how, um, you know, there is a big jump from Rise Royal to JNAP Chicago. I, you know, I think that's uh, that's true. I think that when you're talking best duos of all time, in the parameters I've given you guys, um, there are just six that are way ahead of the others. Parameters I've given is, of course, you're not allowed to use the same player twice. Um, so, yeah, these these guys are very close to number one. Very, very close to number one. And my number one pairing is no longer team together. So I'm going to make the same uh, thing uh, the same thing known. I said earlier on, if JNAP Chicago win anything else together, any other things I've I've you know determined as trophies, um, if they do anything else that would merit a trophy in this tier list, I'll put them ahead of Fairy K up. Um, who are actually still teams together. Fairy Kid up a team together, just not as successfully as Jane up Chicago recently. Um, but if Garrett and Justin win anything else, if they could do anything at all, if they get first seed NA in an online split, if they get a top three at a major, if they can do anything else in the Rocket League world together before they break up, I'll move them to number one. But until they do, my number one. Look at the days, but they went 1,351. That's insane. That's between their first like trophy thing that they won, which was season five uh, world championship and the 2022 winter online first seed from NA. Like, that's a big range. But until they do, I'm putting Turbo Panda number one. The reason I'm going for Turbo Panda ahead of Turbo KDOP or KDOP Panda is because Turbo Panda won DreamHack Leipzig 2 after KDOP left them. They actually beat KDOP in the final to do that. So I think out of all of the duos from the most successful roster in Rocket League history, this is the most successful pairing. Um, they took uh, first place in Gnarly 2. They took first place in EU Online Season 4, 5, and 6. That's your B-tier trophies there. Uh, they got second place at DreamHack Summer, second place at DreamHack Atlanta, second place at X Games, first place at DreamHack Leipzig, uh, number two in the A-tier. And then at the uh, S-tier, they obviously won two World Championships Season 4, 5, second place at E-League 1, second place World Championship Season 6, sec and a third equal at E-League 2. Just incredible what they were able to do in just 609 days. That's from their second place DreamHack Summer right until their win at DreamHack Leipzig 2. Only 609 days, and they did all this. It, it, it really is uh, incredible. Um, but yeah, I, I'll, I'll, I'll just really quickly recap for anyone who joined late if you want to go... Uh, if, if you want me to go through everything one more time, uh, remember that uh, we started off with my criteria. If you want a real quick look, just yeah, pause right now. That's how I rank Rocket League events, personally. Uh, that's uh, the importance of Rocket League events. Last year's Worlds at the top, every other Worlds, current majors and uh, previous E-Leagues and S, uh, other 3v3 lands over a 50k prize pool, Gamers 8, and uh, RLCS Season 9 and X Championships um, in A. And then every uh, playoff in the past, current split, gnarlies, UOs, and B. That's that's how I rank events. And that's how I came to my honorable mentions here. Uh, yeah, I know some people want the rundown of honorable mentions. But yeah, Rizzo actually uh, with... what it, So Rizzo, who was Rizzo's most successful teammate? JNAPS. Rizzo, JNAPS. Would they have made the list if they were allowed to? I kind of omitted them. I omitted things like 
Vatira Rise because obviously Vatira teamed very well with Rise and Joyo as well. But since uh, I only limited myself to having any one name in the list one time, the fact that I've got Chicago JNAPs at six means Rizzo can't be in this list with either one of them. Um, so Rizzo's next best teammate was actually Kronovi. Um, so I put them in honorable mention together. But yeah, I think if, if I didn't make that rule for myself, Rizzo would be uh, with JNAPs. I think Rizzo JNAPs is a more successful duo than Rizzo Kronovi. But yeah, Riz I've already got JNAPs as Chicago, so you had to go with someone else. Um, that's that's the explanation there. Yeah, uh, I went for Vitira Exotic because they won a tiny tournament without Itachi, the uh, Rising Star Online thing with Zen. Uh, that's kind of a joke. You could put Vitira Itachi, Exotic Itachi. Basically, any two Carmine Corp players have to be an honorable mention because they've won two online splits and a major already, uh, which is comparable to winning an E-League and coming you know, second, third in some other events like duels like Metsa and Remco have done. Um, yeah, Fireburner's most successful teammate was obviously Garrett, but since I've got Garrett and Justin in the second position, I can't put Fireburner with either uh, of them, so I had to put him with his next most uh, well-known teammate, Jacob. But together they did a lot, so that's, a, I think, a valid honorable mention. No Jack Nolly. I think Jack and Nolly are slightly below all of the five duos on the screen right now. However, if they can do anything else, they're they're going to be an honorable mention. If they can, you know, be first seed coming out of NA again, they're an honorable mention. They're, they're, they're very, very close. But if you think about what have Jack and Nolly done together, they've been first seed in one split, first place in one major, and that's it. Do you get recognition for being second seed in a split? Nah, nobody cares. Like, you, you lost. You lost a phase. Uh, do you get recognition for coming eighth in a major? No, no, you don't. Uh, you you got to get like top three or else nobody cares. Uh, some people only care about first, but for majors, I only care about top three. For online events, I only care about who won. Um, so yeah, Vatira and Exotic, the difference between them and Jack Nolly is that they've won an extra online split compared to Jack and Nolly. So they're slightly more accomplished when you look at the results. Yeah, that's my honorable mentions. At number 10, I had Ahmad Khalid. Number nine, I had Coxer and Markey. Um, those two were very close. Number eight, I had Card Kyo again, very close. And then I had Joyo Rise at number seven, again, quite close. Now, a big jump. I'm talking a big jump. Like, you know, Rise and Joyo aren't teamed together anymore. Um, Card and Kyo aren't teamed together anymore. Cuxer and Marky aren't teamed together anymore. So, if 10th place Vulcans, Ahmad Khaled, want to make the jump to, if they want to beat um, Cuxer and Marky, they probably just have to get another result at a major and they'd be ahead of them. Um, if they want to get ahead of like, you know, Furia, yeah, same thing. Uh, well, Furia's card, Kyo. Um, if they want to go ahead of Moist, yeah, maybe going to need to win a major, I'd say. Like if, if, if Ahmad and Kyo, uh, Ahmad and Khaled won a major, they'd probably go ahead of Joyo Rise as a duo. Who knows, Joyo Rise might team together, uh, together again in the future. I hope they do. Uh, but yeah, big jump to six, Chicago JNAPs. And then the babyest tiny jump of all time to Fairy KDOP. If Chicago and JNAPs do anything else, I'm going to put them ahead of KDOP Fairy. Uh, then I've got a little, little bit bigger jump to Gimmick Squishy, but uh, slightly bigger. And then a similarly sized jump to Extra Monkey. And then another massive jump to Garrett Justin, who have a baby jump to Turbo Panda. So yeah, the most likely changes that I'll make in my list. If Garrett and Justin can do anything else, if they can win any other trophies they're number one um what are the other active duos actually not many active duos i guess yeah fairy k are technically still an active duo but they're not winning anything together right now so they'd have to get a wonder third and uh start winning again jane up chicago are winning the most likely change is that jane up chicago move up that's my most likely change in my top 10 um from current teams yeah ahmed and khaled are gonna need to grind out another like year of winning if they could dominate mina for another year fair enough i'll probably move them up to like seven ahead of joy rise if they could just <laughs> if they can keep real one at bay for another year i'll probably put ahmad and khaled up to like seven uh but that's that's a year away i think more likely is that chicago jnaps do something and they move up and then i'll also say i think vatira exotic are going to enter the top uh, 10, or Vatira Itachi, or Itachi Exotic, whichever, probably Vatira someone, enter the top 10 soon. 
And I also think um, duos like First Killer Typical, if they stick together, could easily be uh, an honorable mention soon, if not in the top 10. Um, I mean, if First Killer Typical win an event, if they win a major, for example, they'd be in, they'd be in the top 10 for me. Um, and if Nolly, Jack, or you know, Chronic, any two of those guys win another event, they're in the top 10 as well. Um, so yeah, probably... The Gen G duos, the the Phase duos, and the Carmine Corp duos, for me, they're the closest to entering the top 10. Um, and yeah, Falcons, still active. They keep grinding out wins in Mina. They can go up. Um, I could see G2s, j Naps, Chicago doing something else. They could go up as well. A little bit of hopium for Garrett and Justin. And uh, who knows, maybe a little hopium from Joy or Rise as well. But yeah, that's that's my top 10. How do you think I did? Rate my top 10 out of 10. 10 if you think it's good. 1 if you think it was terrible. Or 0 if you want. In chat right now. How do you think I did chat? Okay, not bad. Not bad. Solid 9, 8, 6, 10, 9, 9, 7.5. I'll take it. Honestly, for like a ranking, that's a decent, decent result. I'm happy with that. Happy with your guys' verdict.